Dr. Mike's medical advice. Let's fact check it and see how it holds up. Now onwards to the first clip. Let's go. Cold showers resets your vitals. If it resets your vitals, but basically a defibrillator, that's a problem. Even those that are suffering hypertension are advised to take cold showers. Great medication. Intelligent use of water can eliminate 80% of all lifestyle diseases. I dare say all. You dare say! Because imagine you came into my office and in 80% of cases, I just told you to go and take a cold shower. You'd not be very happy with me. In fact, you wouldn't even pay for my services. People don't need to pay for our services in the UK. <laughs> but actually, I just want to be clear, I am a big advocate of cold showers, but Dr. Mike is right on this one. You don't ask people to take cold showers if they have high blood pressure, because it can actually increase your blood pressure, and there's no evidence that in the long term it can have any benefit. But, it does actually increase your endorphins, which is basically similar to how exercise does by stimulating your body. And some say that it can, you know, make your skin appear more healthy and increase your circulation. But there've, there's been even a big study about uh, having cold showers and cold water immersion after exercising. And they found that people who do weight training and explosive activity actually were worse off by taking cold showers compared to those that didn't. Sorry Wim Hof, but I have to agree with Dr. Mike on this one. Uh, there's not much evidence to be able to recommend cold showers for treating medical disorders. How to calm a crying baby in one minute. Ooh, I like this. These pressure points will help to relax them. I'm scared where this is going. Head and teeth. It says head slash teeth, and then they're pressing on the baby's toes. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this video. It already seems highly inaccurate. Chest, and then the foot lights up. Wait, I'm so confused. Don't listen to me. Wait, okay, so I don't think Dr. Mike really understood what the video was trying to show, and yes, it wasn't that clear. Um, it seems to show reflexology, basically the pressure points on the foot that are supposed to link to certain areas that are causing the baby uh, a problem, like the head or the chest. There's not much evidence to be able to s support the particular association, but I have to disagree with Dr. Mike on this one in that infant foot massage actually is very beneficial and infant massage in general. And there's been a studies on intensive care departments that have shown that uh, they increase the uh, parental bonding with the child and actually help children get through a painful procedures or if they've had any kind of injury when they get massage. I totally understand why Dr. Mike um, wasn't really into this. It is more in the realms of nursing care rather than medical care, uh, but still infant massage is recommended. Now on to the next one. Oh, oh. Ladies, if I'm ever down and I need CPR, this is how you do chest compressions, okay? Oh my God, I know the joke you're making, but trust me, those are not the chest compressions you want if you ever found out. You want the good ones. You want Dr. Mike on top of you, pounding your chest two inches deep, 100 beats per minute, potentially breaking ribs in order to get you help. So, I, I know Dr. Mike was doing that mainly for entertainment purposes, but two inches deep is sometimes too deep because not everyone has the same size chest. And basically if, if like you're an infant, which is a child between zero and one, first of all, you're probably not watching this video. You're probably more interested in the dangling things from your cot, but you would probably be given um, around a third of the chest width as a marker for how deep you need to go. And generally that works for all children because there can be a massive variety. So if you go two inches, you're actually gonna be going way too deep and you'll be causing more harm than benefit if you do that. So uh, I have to disagree with Dr. Mike on this one. Two inches deep is not right for everyone. And 100 beats per minute also, you probably want to go a bit faster if it is a child. How to stop your period for an emergency. Two shots of squeezed lime juice. Tajin powder. The menstrual cycle does experience regularities naturally. Like if you travel, if you're around other individuals, you can actually see fluctuations a few days apart. So the fact that she had a one day difference in her menstrual cycle, I don't think it's due to this like little tequila shot or whatever it was that she took. I have to totally disagree with Dr. Mike on this one. 
So um, lime, particularly Tahitian lime, has something called flavonoids in them, which actually act on the muscles of the myometrium, which is basically where the womb is, and they can make uh, heavy periods lighter or even delay periods for some women. And in places where medication isn't easily accessible, this is actually a technique that's been used for millennia for women that are suffering problems. So um, I don't recommend this if you have access to other treatments. And I do think if you have any problems with your periods, you should definitely see your doctor. But there is science behind the effect of lime juice on periods. So, <laughs> wrong on this one, Dr. Mike. I believe detox teas are pee whoop and Provax and will never vape, but real Dr. Mike will never convince me to not put Q-tips in my ears. I have very little joy in my life. Don't take this away from me. Like I care about your tympanic membrane. What other person in your life has ever came up to you, Miss C, and told you that they care about your tympanic membrane? I bet that's never happened before. <laughs> okay, you can claim that. That's true. And Dr. Mike is right on this one. Q-tips do damage the eardrum, but that's not the main reason why we tell people not to do them. It's actually very rare that you would damage your uh, eardrum by using one. You'd have to put it in decently far and with a lot of force. And when I was on ENT, I didn't actually see any cases. One of my bosses did say over the space of about 15, 20 years, he's probably seen about two or three cases of people who um, have damaged their eardrum with a Q-tip. The main reason why we advise people not to use them is because that pushes earwax deeper into the ear canal and it can also damage the lining of the ear canal, which makes it more susceptible to infections and basically becomes counterproductive. When you push the earwax deeper, it actually becomes impacted and your body's natural way of getting rid of earwax doesn't work anymore. And then you need to go get them syringed, which is uncomfortable and inconvenient. Um, and you'll need it to get your hearing back, which is quite important unless you live in Siberia alone, <laughs> then, then maybe not so much. But then why are you using Q-tips? Stop. All right, so how did Dr. Mike do? Well, I, I think one was incorrect. He had two half marks and the rest were correct. So I would give him a total of three out of five, which is 60%. I think is pretty good since uh, I did go through some of his videos and pick out the ones where there could be some extra things added. I think Dr. Mike's advice altogether is quite accurate. And I thank him for basically getting rid of the insane amount of medical misinformation that's out there. What else would you like to see me react to? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, you may like this other video where I react to House Three Stories. And that is a really quite interesting episode. I learned a lot from reacting to it. And hopefully you do too. I will see you in the next video next week. Uh, stay safe and take care. Look after yourself.